A very good morning to one and all, and warm welcome to the webinar on application of statistical concepts in horticultural research, basics and way ahead, organized by College of Horticulture, Dr. Vyasar Horticultural University, Venkatramanagudam. The application of statistical principles and methods is necessary for effective practice in resolving the different problems that arise in the many branches of horticultural activity. Because of the variability inherent in biological and horticultural data, knowledge of statistics is necessary for their understanding and interpretation. Numerous activities in horticulture are very different from each other, resulting in different branches of horticultural sciences like crop production, land protection, mechanization, water resources, economics, etc. The importance of statistical science in horticulture is obvious, where the collection, analysis, and interpretation of numerical data are concerned. Statistical principles apply in all areas of experimental work, and they have a very important role in horticultural experiments. Statistics plays an important role in experimentation, while many scientific problems could be solved by different statistical procedures. So this is in brief about the importance of today's webinar. So it is my privilege and pleasure to extend heartfelt welcome to the chief guest of today's webinar, Dr. T. Janakiram, sir, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Dr. Vyasar Horticultural University, Venkat Ramanagudam. Dr. Janakiram, sir, is an eminent expert in floricultural research, and he has developed and released six China ester varieties, 15 chrysanthemum varieties, 15 gladiolus varieties, and five hybrids of tuberose. Many of the tuberose, chrysanthemum, and gladiolus were released at the state and central level. China ester varieties developed by him need special mention for their popularity gained in Andhra Pradesh with the support of the Netherlands assisted project AP Bell. He is closely associated with the activities of Rose Society of India, Delhi, Agri Horticulture Society, and Indian Society of Ornamental Horticulture. Dr. Janikram Sir is the Registrar of International Registration Authority of Bougainvillea, IRA. He is Vice President of Indian Society of Ornamental Horticulture, Rose Society of India, New Delhi, and Chief Editor of Journal of Ornamental Horticulture, and a member of several professional societies. To his credit, Serve received a several prestigious awards like PNASF Gold Medal, HSI Gold Medal, Lotus Puraskar, BH Jain Award, and AKGA Gold Medal for his valuable contributions. Sir, your continuous encouragement has been the driving force in conducting this webinar on statistics for the first time in our university. And I deem it a great pleasure to welcome Dr. M. Lakshminarayan Reddigaru, Dean of Horticulture and Dean PG Studies, Dr. Vyasar Horticultural University as a guest of honor, who is the mainstream of inspiration for all the activities of our college with a continuous and constant support. It is a great privilege to me to welcome eminent speaker of today's webinar, Dr. R. Venugopalan. He is working as principal scientist in agricultural statistics and IAHR Bangalore. He has vast experience both in teaching and research. He developed so many statistical models for horticultural crops. Out of his vast research work, I would like to mention a few major works. He developed stability models in watermelon, chili, and onion, and identified lines and hybrids which are stable for commercial exploitation and for release as a variety or hybrid. Developed a statistical package for performing stability analysis research in vegetable crops. Developed statistical models for optimizing the role of weather factors on disease incidence of anthracnose and downy mildew in grapes, cultivar anapshahi, powdery mildew in mango, cultivar alpanso, and blossom blight in mango cultivar totapuri. So this is in brief about our speaker today. Then I would like to place on record 
my warm welcome to all the university officers dean of student affairs dr a sujatha madam controller of examinations dr a padmavathamma madam registrar dr k gopal garu director of research dr r v s kereddy garu and director of extension dr v srinivasulu garu and all the associate deans faculty members from different colleges and the participating students then the live streaming is available on youtube and the link was posted in telegram app i once again welcome and wish you all a very successful and fruitful discussion in this webinar so with these few words now i request dr mln reddy garu dean of horticulture and dean pg studies to give presidential address and also request you sir to preside over the function thank you one and all thank you madam sir good morning to all is it audible yeah yeah audible sir audible sir good morning sir sir i uh, once again welcome and uh, invite our uh, honorable vice chancellor uh, dr janakiram garu as chief guest for today's webinar and uh, i heartily welcome our uh, uh, eminent professor in statistics principal scientist from ihr dr r venugopal i know him very well he is very good in stats six and very helpful our uh, to our pg and phd students so definitely his lecture on application of statistical concepts in horticulture research will go a long way to our pg and phd students and uh, as you know and uh, anyhow I, i also invite all our university officers our staff members and all the audience to this lecture and uh, now starting with this as you know very well that we have a, in a ug course basic statistical methods courses we have and also sometimes we'll be reading the statistical designs also but when come to pg definitely we will be reading the designs experimental designs correlation and regression studies and also some advanced courses in statistics that our pg PhD students are doing in our university. So we have the and here the eminent personality, Dr. Veer, definitely will explain to us not only the he will cover the basic and uh, advanced to the statistical concepts. He plays it in different research areas of sciences. So he also covers today uh, really the advances methods like robust ANOVA, then uh, MANOVA. in production studies incomplete block designs in crop improvement genetic studies non parametric stability method proposed by at ihr by him only for crop variety analysis a linear models of leaf area estimation in perennial crops using non destructive methods non linear scholastic growth models for disease forecasting and estimation of seed longevity in gene bank estimation of breeding values using a bluff or we will going to elucidate today in addition to this dr ven gopalan will definitely will give us the possibility of uh, information uh, exploiting the advanced techniques in different broad areas of horticulture research conventional say molecular breeding and molecular breeding natural resources forest survey studies insect disease management climate change studies social science research he will outline today and uh, so finally the lecture may be we will have a discussions on pros and cons of our several statistical packages and uh, so the uh, what type of precautions also should be taken while doing the adopting these uh, designs that is more important what type of accurate uh, design should be used for the analysis of data and also conversion of the data also so once again i thank for giving me opportunity to be as a as a chairman of this very good webinar application of statistical concepts in article thesis which is the need of the pg and phd students the build a, a, a correct design is very essential for conducting a research uh, so uh, with this i request now our honorable vice chancellor dr janakram garu uh, chief guest of today's function to deliver the message to the all scientists and staff and, and to the our audience sir thank you sir please uh, address uh, address the guardian audience sir thank you very much dr uh, mlr reddy garu 
morning, uh, everyone. Uh, Dr. Vyasar, Horticulture University, started a series uh, of webinars on various topics. And I feel today's uh, webinar on application of statistical concepts in horticultural research basics and way ahead. I feel it's a very important topic for all of us and a deviation from all our other topics. Today, I'm very happy that uh, Dr. M. Lakshmanarayan Reddy are our uh, Dean of Horticulture and Dean of PG Studies and uh, Dr. K. Uma Jyoti Garu, Associate Dean, Dr. K. Uma Krishna Garu, Professor and Head, Dr. R. V. Sujata, Associate Professor. They have all taken interest in arranging this topic today. And I also welcome all my senior officers of the university, all my colleagues from the research stations, the colleges, and also especially students and other who are attending this webinar today. Especially, I'm very happy to see Dr. Sri Harigaru who has uh, retired from our uh, university services recently, but uh, his presence definitely makes us happy today. And I also welcome you, sir. And uh, once again, good morning to all of you. <clears throat> today, I especially thank Dr. Uh, R. Venu Gopalan who is uh, my esteemed colleague and also friend when I was uh, working at IHR. He is one of the very eminent statisticians available in our country. And uh, I know he was in great demand, especially when uh, it came to the research problems assigned to the students. Even I had that privilege of having him as a member for my students, especially my first student, Dr. Balram, who worked uh, for his ministry uh, at IHR. Dr. Venugopalan, I remember, he has given him a different kind of analysis. Students. Uh, uh, what is that, uh, Dr. Venu? I just forgot that. On genetic analysis. Yeah, genetic analysis. Uh, using uh, uh, a different kind of uh, methodology for which he was awarded a gold medal for his work. This is just one example of saying how he is uh, committed, having passion towards uh, statistics. And especially in horticulture crops, there are very few people working on these crops. And Dr. Venugopalan is one of them. And uh, I also hear to quote his uh, exemplary involvement when we had him as a member in the NHRDF committee. Uh, he introduced a scorecard system for uh, evaluating the varieties of onions, which is now actually implemented in a NHRDF. And also we had the opportunity of having his expertise and advice during our uh, many workshops, whether it is vegetable crops, whether it is fruit crops or uh, floriculture, spices. And with this scorecard, we also had uh, you know opportunity of introducing in other crops also. So these are the few examples of uh, quoting his uh, caliber 
and also commitment <clears throat> he was also student advisor when um, uh, he introduced for the first time of uh, the newsletter from the students that's what uh, even our university will be bringing uh, the newsletter that will be brought uh, by our students so today uh, see in the series of webinars i feel see during this uh, lockdown the pandemic i think we are uh, getting in touch with the scientific fraternity and also the students community without any gap so in this series we organized uh, many such uh, webinars so far <clears throat> and also the for the benefit of the farming community and today i would like to share the good news that one such webinar which was organized recently on invasive pests and uh, by participating in this webinar one person from the agro pharma exports he has sent me a mail thanking for organizing this webinar and also he would like to he expressed his desire to have our technology on dicocrisia for uh, commercialization so sometimes this kind of webinars definitely will be useful in both ways so today the application of statistical concepts in horticulture research basics and way ahead is very important normally now with the new education policy in coming years i think the basic sciences are also will become very important for the university system so even i was uh, also requesting our uh, professor of english to organize such a important you know webinar in coming days normally i just remember today dr p r ramchandra who was our uh, very senior statistician and he is very eminent known uh, nationally and internationally and he is the person way back in 80s developed the expert system for uh, you know mushroom he developed at that time and he used to say many times see the statisticians are uh, considered as kare patta we call karve patta and uh, see they are required for the analysis without which we cannot you know analyze our results and conclude our results can't interpret the results but when it comes to you know recognition we play very uh, you know kind of uh, uh, not much importance is attached to statisticians that's why he used to tell we are used as kare patta that is just for adding flavor but when it's to comes to eating then we keep aside the kare patta so now that uh, things are far away and definitely we need to give much importance to these subjects also now and uh, i don't want to speak uh, or say much on the subject because we will be benefited from hearing uh, today's our uh, you know eminent speaker dr r venugopalan but uh, as we all know the statistics helps in providing a better understanding and exact uh, description of a phenomenon of nature and it also helps in proper uh, efficient uh, you know planning of a statistical inquiry in any field of study and also helps in collecting appropriate quantitative data and uh, there is universal acceptance 
of statistics as an essential tool for all types of research, as we all know. The tax acceptance and ever proliferating areas of uh, research specialization, which have led to the corresponding increase in the number of diversity of uh, available statistical procedures. In horticulture research, particularly, for example, there are different statistical techniques for crop, for laboratory and field experiments, for genetic and physiological research, and so on. Although this uh, diversity indicates the availability of appropriate statistical techniques for most research problems, it also indicates the difficult of uh, matching the best technique to a specific uh, experiment. Obviously, this difficulty increases as more procedures are developed. And uh, choosing the correct statistical procedure for a given experiment must be based on expertise in statistics and in the subject matter of the experiment. The major objective of this webinar is to provide the knowledge and information on various statistical techniques for progressive horticulture research. And definitely, when we are uh, going to plan our experiments, whether it is our uh, research progress, students' problems, we are definitely going to involve the planning and execution of the statistical experiments. Without approval of the statistician, I think we cannot go ahead with the experiments. Normally, we should have their advice in the beginning of the planning. And uh, I also see now uh, the analysis part has become very, you know, easy because with the computers available now, uh, students normally we just you know, without uh, knowing, without knowing the in-depth of the methodology, we just copy the procedure already, which were available in the pre previous thesis. So I request all our teachers and also students, I think they should get better understanding of the procedure, which they are using for their thesis problem. Even we used to be, uh, you know, taught about uh, very basic uh, uh, statistical principles. So once again, I think definitely today's uh, this webinar talk by Dr. Venugopalan will be very useful and uh, I request especially the students uh, to get benefited from this webinar and also please, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, ask your uh, any queries uh, even later be in touch with uh, Dr. Venugopalan also and our own uh, uh, statistician, Dr. K. Uma Krishnagaru, he has also taken without, uh, you know, much time, it was decided and uh, very short period, he could make the arrangements. I, uh, I compliment uh, uh, him for taking this uh, initiative. And once again, I thank all of you for your presence and uh, we will go ahead with our uh, program. Thank you very much. Sir, thank you, sir. Sir, thank you, sir. Honorable Vice Chancellor, sir, thank for you. giving valuable uh, uh, message to the students, PG students, staff, and uh, audience. Sir, now uh, I request the Uma Krishna Garu to read about the bio data of the or to introduce eminent uh, scientist, Dr. R. Venugopalan Garu to the staff and the students and to the audience. So now Dr. Uma Krishna Garu. Thank you, sir. Honorable Vice Chancellor of Dr. Vaisar Horticulture University, Dr. T. Janki Ram Garu, respected Dean of Horticulture and Dean of PG Studies, 
డాక్టర్ ఎం లక్ష్మీనారాయణ రెడ్డి గారు రెస్పెక్టెడ్ యూనివర్సిటీ ఆఫీసర్స్ రెస్పెక్టెడ్ అసోసియేట్ డీన్ ఆఫ్ కాలేజ్ ఆఫ్ హార్టికల్చర్ వెంకట్రామనగూడెం డాక్టర్ కె ఉమాజ్యోతి గారు డిస్టింగ్విష్డ్ యూనివర్సిటీ ఆఫీసర్స్ డిస్టింగ్విష్డ్ టీచింగ్ ఫ్యాకల్టీ అండ్ సైంటిస్ట్ ఫ్రమ్ వేరియస్ కాలేజెస్ రిజిస్ట్రేషన్స్ ఆఫ్ డాక్టర్ వై యూనివర్సిటీ అండ్ అదర్ యూనివర్సిటీస్ అండ్ డిఆర్ స్టూడెంట్ పార్టిసిపెంట్స్ వెరీ గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ అండ్ వెల్కమ్ టు ది వెబినార్ ఐ ఆమ్ డాక్టర్ కె ఉమాకృష్ణ వర్కింగ్ యాజ్ ప్రొఫెసర్ ఇన్ స్టాటిస్టిక్స్ అండ్ హెడ్ ఆఫ్ ది డిపార్ట్మెంట్ ఆఫ్ ఇంగ్లీష్ స్టాటిస్టిక్స్ అండ్ సోషల్ సైన్సెస్ ఆఫ్ కాలేజ్ ఆఫ్ హార్టికల్చర్ వెంకట్రామన గౌడం సిన్స్ టూ థౌజండ్ టెన్ ఐ ఆమ్ వెరీ మచ్ డిలైటెడ్ టు ఇంట్రడ్యూస్ టుడేస్ ఎమినెంట్ స్పీకర్ డాక్టర్ ఆర్ వేణుగోపాలం గారు he is the principal scientist agriculture statistics indian institute of horticulture research bangalore he was born at the temple town of srirangam tamil nadu in the year 1971 he did bsc statistics from st joseph's college trichy with gold medal during 1991 he completed msc and phd agriculture statistics from IARI IASRI during 1991-96 with a specialization of biometrical genetics he belongs to 1995 batch of ARS with the net and working in ARS service since 1997 he involved in research activities pertaining to crop modeling biometrical genetics and big data analysis in horticultural crops recently he suggested a methodology for crop varietal release based on the stability for multiple traits attaching desired weightage to the traits based on data mining he was published about 132 research articles in in national and international journals he involved in educational activities since 2000 with recognition as guide and faculty with the iari university of agriculture science darwad university of horticulture sciences bagalkot dr ysr hu venkatramanagudam and jain university bangalore with the recognition of ihr as off campus of iari during 2014 has implemented the education activities as a team till march 2017 as an organizing secretary has conducted the first horticultural education conference at ihr on 24th september 2016 with the mobilizing the participation of 220 students and 155 faculties across our country he established at icr ihr three states of art classrooms and one conference hall with the smart board teaching facilities coupled with the modern cafeteria for students he introduced newsletters exclusively for issues of students he organized yoga camp sports week all india study to cat training hindi seminars for students as co curricular activities as a teacher he offered 22 courses till date for university of horticulture science and iari ihr phd students as of now guided four students in agriculture statistics and as statistician for 130 msc and phd students of university of agriculture science darwad university of horticulture science bagalkot iari ihri and dr ysr hu in horticulture post harvest technology soil science plant pathology and entomology notably 64 out of 132 total research publications are exclusively out of the students thesis he recognized as a member of rac 
NHRDF since 2016 and in Doctoral Committee Board of Nimhans Institute of National Importance for PhD Biostatistics, Research Problem Formulation and Evaluation. He involved as a team member in research for releasing gladiolus and China aster varieties at the Indian Institute of Horticultural Research. He was also served as editor of Journal of Horticulture Science from 2009 to 2019. I assured all the participants, everyone will gain more knowledge and information on suitable statistical techniques for horticulture research through his talk. Thank you. Thank you, one and all. Thank you, sir. Now, uh, thank you, Umakrishna Garu. Thank you, sir. Now, I request Dr. R. Venugopalan Garu, Principal Scientist, uh, Agriculture Statistics, sir, uh, to give a uh, today's webinar uh, on the adoption of application of statistical concepts in horticulture research basics and way ahead uh, and guide us, our students and our staff members with your uh, concepts, sir. So please, sir, Dr. R. Vain Gopalan, sir. Sir, good morning. Uh, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Dr. YSR Articles University, uh, respected Dean and senior officers of the university. At the outset, I congratulate uh, our Honorable Vice Chancellor and a good family friend of mine for taking over as Vice Chancellor of this prestigious university. And I also thank him for giving me an opportunity to uh, deliver a webinar talk on this method, application of statistical concepts in horticulture research, basics and way ahead. So to begin with, let me say the genesis of agricultural statistics in our country. So all of us know very well, statistics is a science which deals with collection, analysis, and interpretation of scientific data. The eminent statistician, the living legend, Professor Kalyambudi Radhakrishna Rao, recently his centenary year was celebrated, day was celebrated. He said, statistics is a science of learning from data. In our country, the then Imperial Council of Agriculture Research, now ICR, established a statistical unit in the year 1930 under the headship of none other than Professor Pondrang Vasudev Sukatmi to assist their planning of experiments, analysis, and also for formulation of future technical programs of ICIR. In the year 1959, based on the recommendation of FAO, it was renamed to IASRI, the present IASRI New Delhi. As a part of uh, education activities with IRI, IASRI introduced MSc, PhD in, Autic in uh, statistics, computer science, bioinformatics from the year 1964 onwards. At IAHR, especially, the uh, articultural statistics research is going on since late 1970s. So let me present the overview of my today's lecture. So at first, I will be dealing with what is the necessity of statistically analyzing our research data. Then the different types of data and their associate measurement. What is a suitable uh, tool we need to use for selecting a technique? What should be the precautionary measure we should use? Then I will proceed to application of statistical techniques in different areas of articulture research. First, for basic methodologies and also for advanced methodologies based on my interaction with several scientists for last 20 years at IHR. Then I shall be presenting summary of various research areas of application of these techniques in articulture data analysis. I shall conclude with the pros and cons of statistical packages which are available as of now. Let me begin with the need for statistical analysis. As all of us know, it is the base for scientific validity of the experimental results. Once our ex-director and the first uh, vice chancellor of Dr. OSR University, Dr. Shikamani sir, he said, it's a scientific seal for any experimental results to proceed further. Now, why do we statistically analyze the data? As you all know, to infer about a huge population, we conduct a small experiment. Then we try to take a holistic decision about the 
population based on the sample whatever we have analyzed say for example suppose if we say a particular growth like regulator at a particular concentration induce flowering in mango crop so for this what we will be doing we will be taking only sample of some 10 to 20 trees but the decision what we are going to take for the entire population holistically then then comes whatever the inference we have drawn whether it can be reproducible across time and space if the same research is done on next year or in some other location is it possible to reproduce if so then what is the level of probability of confidence with which we can recommend our conclusion so for getting answer yes to all this question a yes, systematic statistical planning and analysis is the need of the hour of course it removes any bias on the part of the experimenter towards any conclusion scientific conclusion what we are drawing so when we see statistics immediately what it comes to our mind is data so the researchers articulate researchers measure different characters different traits of their experiment in different units say something may be in kg something may be in gram centimeter mm ml percentage so all these traits falls under a broad category of four units of measurement that is nominal ordinal interval ratio so why i am specifying specifying here is even for a simple correlation analysis based on the traits necessity traits behavior only one should use a appropriate method so we shall see that in detail in the later slide now let me turn my attention to the application of basic statistical methods in research data analysis so i will be introducing about this methodologies whatever it is in use but only i will be saying the pros and cons of each and every one so you all know in statistics each and every technology is introduced to in sequential manner to address some lacuna in the previous methodology say for example that mean or average is the simplest one we all know so here we have given a typical example where in both variety and a and b both yields 26 kg per tree so now a researcher is interested to suggest only one so which one he will suggest then he will go and see which is most consistent across the samples drawn so for this he is going for computing another measure called as variance of standard deviation so if you see the variance of standard deviation this is mostly affected by the samples whatever considered say both researchers a and b conclude the same result so first one takes 100 samples but next one takes 60 whom to relay much so for this purpose we are going and computing another measure called as standard error or and coefficient of variation so lesser the standard error and lesser the coefficient of variation we say that better is the repeatability of the results but there is a rider in this if the material under comparison is highly heterozygous just like initial evaluation of population in genetic studies then high variability standard error coupled with i coefficient of variation as expressed by range is a need of the other because the breeders aim is to enhance the genetic base of the trait whatever they study no what so far whatever the estimated statistics whatever we did that is whether it is a mean or variance or standard error they are all based on a sample of the whole population study so can we generalize this inference drawn or precisely whether the sample drawn is a true representative of the population then for this purpose we are going for testing of hypothesis so here in this case if we want to test two samples there are some uh, possibilities one can use the independent t test or parity test independent t test we will use <coughs> when we want to compare the yield of two varieties but when we want to compare the impact of a particular chemical treatment say pest count in the same plant before and after applying some control measure then the samples are related so we want to go for we have to go for pair t test so what is the significance of uh, selection of this pair t test or independent t test otherwise when we try to take an inference Uh, we compute a test statistic value and we try to compare with the table value the normal table value at 5% level is 1.96 had we used independent t test instead of pair t test here suppose the calculated value is 1.76 then we will say that 1.76 is less than 1.96 so both the treatments are on par but here since the samples are related we should have used a pair t test here the table value is 1.65 so 1.76 is greater than 1.65 so there is a significant difference among the treatments hence a mere selection of 
a wrong statistical tool will try to say whatever the research whatever we have done resulting in a non significant suppose if you are having more than two samples then we will go for analysis of variance that is done through f test <coughs> now we will come to the necessity of statistical designs in research experiment the main aim is to study the relative performance of the genotype set of genotypes or varieties or treatments over the checks individually or interaction the main purpose is here is are significant differences are really non significant with what level of certainty we can advocate the results obtained can be reproducible over time and space so that comes the importance of p value i shall discuss so in the design experiment we may have a single factor only one factor or we may have a two factors say relative performance of different varieties versus nutrient levels or different methods of irrigation <clears throat> now here the point to ponder is whether we want to give equal importance to both the factors if not which particular design we need to use let us see that so only one source of variation for a controlled experiment we will go for crd when there are two sources of variation we will go for rbd everyone knows but when there are more than two factors we want to study the interaction of these two factors if the two factors if you want to give equal importance then we will go for factorial rbd suppose a breeder is trying to evaluate some 10 varieties for three irrigation practices so he is main interested to study the varietal performance so he will be interested to estimate the efficacy of varieties over the other factors with more emphasis so he needs to go for split plot so the preferred factor should be put in the subplot design suppose if he is an agronomist his main interest is to study the three irrigation practices irrespective of the varietal difference so he needs to take this subplot factor as a irrigation practices say for example some other scientists like uh, soil scientists he may be interested to see i i am not interested about the individual factors importance but i am very much interested about the interaction effect how the interaction of these two factors determine the nutrient imbalance or microbial constitution then he will be interested to go for a strip plot design so the objective of the experimenter decide which particular design one should use then let me say one more thing suppose if we try to assess the yield of several mango trees over different orchard as all of you know the age of the tree matters the yield of a particular mango crop so here there is one indirect factor there is concomitant variable we call which is influencing the yield so by taking into effect the effect of concomitant map factor we need to go for analysis of covariance instead of performing analysis of variance this is very much essential in perennial crop experiments so we have done the analysis of variance using any particular design so what is the next step we want to know whether the significant difference whatever we have got is due to one or two treatments or it is due to several treatments so for this we will go for two famous post hoc test that is cd lsd or dmrt so when we have a predefined check or control in the experiment we need to prefer lsd if we don't have any predefined check or control we need to go for dmrt <coughs> then for students purpose the test statistic we want to present while writing scientific articles so all will be giving the anova table of means cd dmrt cb and scm value everyone knows but in addition to that if you notice the foreign journals they will be depicting the value of called as p value so this significance of what is the significance of this p value this p value measures the strength of the inference whatever we are drawing suppose two researchers are coming out with a significant results so if the p value is less than 0.05 that is sufficient for us to say there is a significant difference so same two researchers are coming out the same result whom to believe suppose the first researcher says that my p value is 0.003 that means 3 out of 1000 times only whatever the inference he is drawing by conducting the results is expected to go wrong so this p value attach importance to the inference whatever we are drawing at the end of the day there is a precautionary measure when using analysis of variance for certain trials <coughs> in addition to the horticulture trials our horticulture is do collect information about the plant production trials like percentage disease incidence or pest count 
one of the disadvantage of this anova is it requires the satisfaction of normality assumption to do the analysis of variance here the data i mean suppose we are having 10 treatments and five replication there are 50 observations these 50 observations should follow normality if it is not following normality we cannot make use of the analysis of variance so what is the way out we need to transform our data using some suitable transformation prior to analysis of variance so if the, our data is uh, in wide range say 0 to 100 across the 50 values then we will choose arc sign transformation also called as angular transformation suppose if our data is in both the tiles of the normal distribution either 0 to 30 or 70 to 100 but not both we need to go for square root transformation suppose if a researcher uh, counts the trips incidence over weeks first week 25 second week 75 third week 150 fourth week 700 so it is exponentially growing then we need to make use of the logarithmic transformation before subjecting our data to analysis of variance now this is the most important slide how do we identify about the optimum plot size or the number of replication which we need to take while conducting a specific scientific experiment <clears throat> so for this what we have to do is we advocate to conduct a uniformity trial so what what is the procedure is we need to grow in a piece of land a particular variety uniformly so at the time of harvest they will be harvesting in different plot size then we compute the coefficient of variation for the each plot size so lesser the cd value and whatever the number of plants in the plot represent the optimum plot size and number, number of replication which one has to adopt for scientifically conducting any experimental in his field or in a field so there is one on the hand out of optimum size and shape for conducting field experiments in horticulture crops uh, compiled by me and by my ex it is based on three decades of uniformity trials conducted in various crops at IHR. Now let me turn my attention to association studies. So far what we have uh, seen is uh, working out the basic measures or conducting analysis of variance for each trait. But the biological traits are interrelated among themselves. So instead of taking individual factor based inference, it is mostly decided by the researchers to capture the interrelation and try to come out with some inference as a holistic nature. So as I was earlier, I was telling, whatever the traits our researchers are measuring, they are not measured in the same units. They are measured in the different units. Suppose if you want to study the association between two traits, if they are measured in interval scale, normally the plot yield or plant type or in ratio scale, which, which are measured in ratio, then we need to go and apply the call Pearson correlation coefficient to know whether there is any association exists. <coughs> Suppose in a post harvest studies, when the judges are asked to evaluate different products for some flavors or whatever the traits under study. So here they will be giving ranks for each of the products for whatever the character study. So the ranks will be given in some hedonic scale. Here our main aim is whether the judges inference with respect to suitability of a particular product is same. So for this, whether the judges are associated among themselves in taking the holistic inference. So here we cannot use the call Pearson correlation because it is dictated by a ranking scale. So we need to go for Spearman correlation. Similarly, by serial correlation, it is used when we try to test the presence or absence of a molecular band. So what inference I am saying here is, if instead of using Spearman rank correlation, if you use Carpleason correlation or otherwise, what is going to happen is, we are going to get a, even a non-significant correlation or instead of positive correlation, we may get a negative correlation. This is mainly useful for the breeders because for the breeders, the first step of selection is using the correlation coefficient only. Now let us come to the another topic, regression. So this correlation, it cannot estimate the effect of one factor over the other factor. How the change in one factor results in change in main factor. So in order to establish a cause and effect relationship, we need to go for developing regression models. <clears throat> so first time it was used by Professor Galton in genetics to know how much on an average both the parents' traits are inherited in the progenies. So he consulted Professor R.A. Fisher, then he suggested to make use of this regression methodology. 
that's why the another name for regression is stepping back towards average a simple regression model is of the type so if you want to know the quantification of each important e importance of each exercise on y we will express the values of b1 b2 b3 accordingly suppose if the exercises are measured in different units suppose if you are uh, under, if you are studying some canopy architecture studies so the different canopy parameters versus yield we will be trying to study so the different canopy parameters are measured in different scales so we cannot make use of this simple regression coefficient to decide how each of these canopy factors influence on yield so for this we need to go for standardized regression coefficient which is also printed in any statistical package when we do for analysis then comes to the optimization models suppose if we say that 10 uh, um, weather factors together explain the disease incidence of downy mildew in grapes now we want to know among those 10 weather factors whether all the factors are important if there is a group of factors important so which are in that order whether maximum temperature and relative humidity only decide 80% of the uh, prediction or all the factors together so for this optimization we need to go for step wise regression model when we study about the adequacy of the model we always compute the r square value so if the r square value is 0.8 then we say that 80% of the variability in the main variable under study is captured very well by the information given by all the independent variables but here the caution is <coughs> whatever the regression models we develop it is based on a sample of data finally we are going to take inference about the entire population as such so for this purpose we statistician recommend the residuals generated by the prediction model should satisfy randomness and normality assumptions which are available in the literature so there are numerous application of this regression model starting from crop logging studies to marker assisted selection we shall be seeing this in the future slides now let me turn my attention to some advanced statistical methods so for last 20 to 22 years of my interaction with many of the breeders production specialist entomologists pathologists biotechnologists soil scientists and extension scientists i have taken up some <coughs> 10 of the practical problems for which the intervention of i and statistical methods are required so what i will be doing here is first i will be presenting the problem as perceived by them then i will be seeing what is the existing methodology what are the lacuna in the existing methodology what is the remedy and what is the new methodology which we can suggest and how the new methodology has helped the researchers in capturing the reality of whatever the experiment they have done so like this i will be going for the next 10 slides so first uh, let me uh, consider the advanced experimental design this randomized uh, block design is the most famous uh, design which is used by most of the experimenter whether it is a bd a long term experiment or a single layer experiment <coughs> suppose <coughs> if they want to compare 10 rootstock treatments so they would have observed this uh, variability in terms of some four or five replication so there will be some 50 observations in nutshell for a particular year for a particular character yield per tree so among those 50 observation certainly there will be some observation for some treatment which are far away from the rest of the observation this we call it as an outlier say yield for a particular variety or particular treatment in a replication may be higher than the other two replication of the same treatment similarly if we come to a crop protection scientist yeah for a particular treatment chemical treatment in a particular replication it would have got 95% of the mortality so now the question is the breeders or the crop protection scientists they may not be in a position to hide that particular promising results whatever they have got it one way out is okay let us uh, consider these all these uh, aberrant values and analyze the data because of this presence of aberrant values we are going to get a non significant results so at the end of the day we are going to say that all the 10 rootstock treatments are on par and also coupled with that high coefficient of variation value we may get beyond 20% so 
so the reproducibility of the result is also question mark another option is okay we are having sufficient replication let us delete one or two replication and reanalyze the data it's okay but deleting the replication from the original design it will disturb the randomization and also the breeder or a crop protection scientist would like to exploit the particular aberrant value whatever he has got it why we should delete that so now the question is by retaining that aberrant value we want to come out with the best treatment over years or a particular year so for this we recommend to adopt robust anova so what this uh, robust anova does is it employs some estimation m estimation procedure so it captures the variability across replication for each treatment when then by assigning some weightage without removing the replication value it will reanalyze the data so we have done some <coughs> very good work in our ihr so i shall present the result so that you can appreciate what is the importance of using the robust anova than the regular anova so as i was telling there was some totapuri root shock trial which was going on at ihr for last 20 years so at the end of the day because of using the classical anova it so happened that uh, all the treatments all the root shock treatments happens to be on par you can see the p value in the second column na 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 non significant so for all the treatments it happens to be non significant so when we apply the robust anova you can see that cv value it has uh, drastically reduced so this na uh, represents not applicable because here we are having pool data so for the pool data that the last row whatever we are seeing what we infer is the p value not only drastically reduced but there is a reduction in cv to the tune of 60 percentage so we are we could able to identify t3 volur as the best treatment over the years without removing the aberrant replication in any of the treatment for any of the years so this uh, uh, paper has been uh, communicated recently and it is already available in the ihr annual report and we have done another uh, experiment that is uh, root zone drying irrigation experiments in red lady of papaya so based on that also we could see that when we use the regular anova the p value which is uh, mentioned in the third column it has uh, it has given a non significant results but when we use the robust anova without removing the outlier uh, without removing the outlier application the p value has drastically reduced and the researcher is in a position to say which is the best treatment irrigation treatments out of this now the second advanced methodology let me go <coughs> so now say the researchers compare the efficiency of several treatments based on several trials say in the last example itself the root shock treatments totapuri root shock treatments in addition to the yield he might have observed the average weight or yield in number or some other trials so ironically if we see for some trials a particular treatment may come out as the best for some other trials some other treatment may come out as a best when we recommend to a farmer a researcher expect that not only for yield related but also for other trials i should be in a position to recommend a best treatment so what is the way out so simple doing the robust anova or a simple rbd individually for a trial it is not going to solve a purpose so for this purpose work is in progress at ihr to make use of the multivariate analysis of variance approach so what it does in nutshell is it will capture the interrelationship among the several trials so several trials researchers observe, would have observed the data it capture the interassociation among the trials then using a principal component analysis it will work out a z score for each of the treatment for each of the replication across trials then finally for the combined trial one anova that is one anova will be done so that anova will say which is the best treatment collect across all the Let me come to the uh, third instance. So the breeders during the initial generation, they will be evaluating huge number of germ plasm lines. So if the test treatments we call it as germ plasm lines under evaluation or more, their availability is also scarce compared with their unknown potential. So if we use a RBD design, say for example they have collected some hundred germ plasm lines. 
from survey or from wild species and we are having some four varieties check with which they want to compare so there are total 104 entries if you want to make use of a rbd minimum three replication is required when we don't have sufficient seed material for the newly introduced germ plasm when we don't know the unknown potential if we try to make use of a rbd then the layout and also the associated inputs are very high it is very difficult for them to manage <clears throat> so for that we have suggested a way out that is augmented incomplete block design let us present the let me present the result so we have we have conducted an experiment on okra that is based on 100 new accessions collected over different surveys and these accessions they have been compared with uh, some check varieties already having that is six check varieties now the here the main aim of the breeder is he has to evolve a augmented block design so the augmented block, block design what it does is this all these check varieties for which sufficient seed material is available planting material is available with him he will repeat in every block sufficiently twice or thrice but the new accessions for which the seed material is scarce or its potential is not known he will be replicating only once in the entire layout so in next when when he is taking observation he will identify promising accession out of this 100 which will perform better than the average of check varieties so by using this he has uh, the breeder has identified two accessions then next generation the two accession with uh, six uh, uh, varieties he has used the rbd and the solution whatever in hybridization program he has proceeded successfully so what is the advantage of this augmented block design is it has it has decreased about 60.2 percent of the land area in that paper it is very clearly mentioned <clears throat> now let me turn my attention to the use of incomplete block design in biometrical genetic studies the normally used mating design is the dialyl design for crossing work so in the dialyl design also it also necessitates the use of the rbd design but when the number of lines increases then the number of crosses also increases rapidly we will have specifically 220 crosses when we try to have f1 hybrids plus f1 reciprocals reciprocal in our mating design so what is the consequence to the researchers if he is trying to accommodate the large entries based on rbd setup large intra black error will come then cv value will be very high so what is the subsequence of this uh, what is the interpretation of this real analysis the people will be interested to estimate the best combiner that is gca and the sea effect so these effects will be estimated with a lesser position so what is the way out the same augmented design or some incomplete block design can be used as discussed in the previous slide that we call it as a partial incomplete block design and i have given an example of pbab design so this pbab design it only estimate it will consider only a portion of the crosses and it will estimate with more efficacy even lattice design and line entry test design also falls under this gamut let me turn my application to application of linear regression model so here i have taken a classical example of leaf area estimation in perennial tree crop using non destructive sampling approach so the normal approach for estimation of leaf area is bringing the leaves plucking it from the trees then bringing it to our physiological lab then estimating it or even taking the instrument and measuring it there itself in both the cases it is expensive as recorded in the literature time consuming and also removing of leaves indirectly reduce the photosensitivity and also yield of the crop so what is the remedy at ihr we have <coughs> estimated leaf area determination in two cultivars simply by constructing a simple linear regression model by capturing the functional relationship between leaf areas versus several of the parameters based on 100 samples. So based on the 100 samples, we have constructed a stepwise regression model and we uh, observed that only, the <coughs> only one uh, measurement, that is middle low measurement made on the 100 random selected sample could predict the leaf area to the extent of 77 to 78 percentage in Diana and Puna cultivars. So the validation which was done in the next year, it has yielded the R-square value of 82 and 84 percentage. 
So without removing the leaves, non-destructive sampling, this leaf area present leaf area model will envisage for a quick estimation of leaf area. The <coughs> the results are also presented in this paper. The extension of this work I have done, and I will cover in big data analysis to address the question: How many samples are required to be identified? That is optimum sample size for conducting future experiment. to estimate the leaf area using the non destructive method here we have done 100 there 100 is sufficient or 200 is required that we shall see in detail now let me turn our attention to crop growth model and climate change model it is one of the my favorite area <coughs> you know very well <coughs> factors responsible for crop growth in relation to weather factors they vary from stage to stage starting from seedling stage to fruiting stage and also if there is any aberration occurs in one particular phenological stage it is bound to carry forward to the subsequent stage simply if we develop a regular regression model we cannot the predict the disease severity or occurrence of pest which always assumes linear functional relationship among the factors so if we make use of regular regression model what it assumes that in every week what is the increase in disease incidence or occurrence of pest is constant which will not occur at all in biological organism so what is the reality so these factors are non linearly related so for this we want to capture some non linear relationship among those weather factors in this case from one stage to another stage of the crop growth using artificial neural network which just works like our uh, neural networks in our brain so what this nn does is it capture the non linear relationship among the factors responsible for crop growth or yield or disease incidence or pest occurrence in a particular stage or across stage so the plant growth in vegetative stage would have carry forward to flowering stage but not in equal amount so what it does is it will build up a network of related factors using information technology driven algorithms then finally it will predict the yield based on the network of models so we have done a classical work to identify stage wise important biometrical factors responsible for crop yield in brinjal so this use of artificial neural network it capture the inherent nonlinearity among the biometrical factors to predict the yield 17% more accurately than the regular approach so without it infra interface this ann could not be developed so let me come to my phd research topic which i did at iasri that is based on non linear stochastic model so what are what is the necessity of going for non linear regression models so whatever the linear regression model we have studied so far it assume that for every unit increase in the input factor the output factor will increase in the same amount say for example the rate of change in disease incident or pest count is not constant between two successive weeks so first week to second week whatever the proportion of increase is that it is not constant from the non linear approach so in order to capture the disease progression realistically as expressed by the data we need to employ some non linear models non linear growth models we call it as so what is the additional advantage of this non linear models it can helps to arrive at quantities of biological trends what is the rate of disease growth per week which is occurring in the whatever the disease what we are studying and what is the optimum time of taking up any prophylactic interaction in intervention by the uh, crop curator or the pathologist and also it helps us to estimate one value called as area under disease progressive curve let us present some of the non linear growth models which are available in the literature if nft uh, denotes the population size there are four there are three or four statistical non linear models available in the literature as i said the biological quantities of interest it will work out a c and also the ad audpc value and more importantly what is the optimum time to spray i won't get into the details of this but let me present the results only so this is the gompers and logistic model did for forward and backward pruning of downy mildew disease incidents in grapes and i am showing you variety so what is the practical utility so based on this results we have seen that rate of disease severity was maximum during fourth to fifth week and fifth to sixth week respectively after pruning for backward and forward 
So this has helped us to identify separately for backward and pruning what should be the uh, prophylactic strategy one needs to do, and also the model resulted information given us what is the carrying capacity, what is the intrinsic growth rate, and also the AWPC value. Finally, uh, the main aim of the uh, breeder or the pathologist to identify what is the time in which there is time in which in which the intervention is required. So this nonlinear model has given the result as fifth and sixth week respectively for backward and four pruning data. Prophylactic intervention is required. The application of nonlinear models is not only restricted to disease forecasting or pest uh, forecasting, and also we are used in carbon sequencing studies. A classical nonlinear model, a power model, we call it is. It was developed for estimation of above ground mass ground biomass in grafted mango trees. Using only two factors, so this uh, information has been published in the results. So, using this, science scientists has uh, worked out the what is the carbon sequestration accumulated in the grafted mango trees. Also, this nonlinear regression model can be classically useful for estimation of the potential seed longevity of seeds which is stored in gene bank for varying temperature and moisture content. So, if a breeder is given the results, this is the longevity of seed, which you are going to make use for your hybridization program. This many years, that longevity is going to be there. Then he will be in a position to make use of his better and the variety, whatever he is going to develop, it will have high heritability and also the hybrid vigor will be very high for over generation. So, there is a classical paper by Sapro and Premnarine Kranzens. Let me turn my attention to the advanced statistical data analysis, advanced statistical method, big data analysis for which information technology interference is required. <coughs> I have presented some <coughs> four uh, situations. A breeder is evaluating some 500 accessions or lines over 50, 40 to 50 crop varieties. So his main aim is to get a homogeneous group of accession for further studies. So that is precisely we call it as a diversity analysis. Next, yeah, uh, entomologist. There is a new pest called the Scuta absoluta, which is coming up. So he has to evolve a management strategy. So based on observation of some initial observation of some four or five trends, he can go and see the diversity dendrogram map, which is available for all the pests where this Scuta absoluta diversity fix, fits in very well. So, which dendrogram group it fits? So, by using only four or five parameters initially, he can see in which group it is falling. So, whatever the management strategies which was followed for that particular group, if he or she is able to apply, then certainly at the initial generation, initial period itself, this will be restricted, it won't be allowed to spread further. Then another utility is in cloud computing, which I will be dealing with in detail in some slide. The last application is in bioinformatics. So many genome sequence data across several situations could have been accumulated by the bioinformatics scientists. They want to comprehend the data, whatever they have developed. For this, what is the main big data analysis tools which we are going to use? That also I will be discussing. So what are the different tools which are available? First one is statistical modeling I have discussed. The second one is data mining, that is cluster analysis or support vector machine. Third one is resampling method, that is bootstrapping, that I will be giving an example. Then the dimension reduction, which is done through principal component analysis, I will be giving an example. Also, fuzzy logic and neural networks that we have already studied. So, before getting into the details, what is the big data? It may be big data in, may be in terms of volume or variety or velocity or veracity. The data may be available in a cloud or as a database. So, utility of big data analysis is statistical method coupled with the IT infra interface. It needs to comprehend the data for researchers' users to take a practical decision. Let me start with a first example. So, we have seen in few slides back, uh, this leaf area estimation using non-destructive sampling, only using <clears throat> middle lobe V2 information of 100 samples, we could predict the uh, leaf area using this particular model. 
Now the question is how reliable this prediction? Whether 150 or 100 samples are enough to draw inference? Whether we need to go for recording leaf this particular parameter that V2 of 200 samples or even 50 itself is sufficient? So for this purpose, we have used a bootstrap method. We have generated some 75,000 sub samples of different variance size. Then again, we have used the whatever the uh, leaf area estimation model given. Then we have identified the optimum sample size based on the change in the R square value between two sample size, whatever we have tried. So what we have inferred is 150 and 200 respectively for Diana and Puna is sufficient for predicting leaf area using middle low data alone in the next research which is coming up. So this uh, paper I have already communicated to Indian General Agriculture Science, it may come up mostly uh, in the future issue. Next important use of uh, uh, big data analysis is the conjoint analysis, which we call it as a preferential analysis. Here breeder is developing a technology. Sir, when come back, sir. Hello. When come back, sir. Mama, guess what? Phone change, Andy. Ah, oh, guess. Sir, excuse me, sir. When go on, sir? Your audio. Hello. Unmute, sir. Man. Hello. When go on, sir? Sir, please unmute. Unmute yourself, sir. Unmute. Sir. Just after that. When go up, sir? Hello? Come on. The phone at that level. So try again. Under WhatsApp, pay to. Hello. Hello. Ah, okay, sir. You are, okay, now it is clear, sir. Okay, okay. Because some disturbance in internet connection, that's why it got. Ah, ah, please uh, share your screen, sir. Yeah, yeah. Is it okay now? Okay, okay, sir. Okay, I will proceed. So the common method which is used for <coughs> stability analysis based on Hebert Russell. It will help us to work out two measures of stability. Then it will <coughs> group all the lines tested 
into three groups suitable for all environment suitable for poor environment and suitable for best environment these are very well documented in articles of literature now what is the approach whatever we have suggested ihr so the classical parametric approach while assessing the performance of each variety over location it may not capture the relative performance of the genotypes and also when a breeder aims to develop a particular variety by addressing the lacuna in for a particular character in the check variety certainly he will not only ensure the better performance of his line but also ensures other characters in the line what he is going to release performs equally better then another situation is if he is doing a resistant breeding he may not be interested to give equal importance to all the traits that means he has to give importance to the resistant traits so all this coupled with this the crop breeder may be interested to suggest the farmer a line which performs consistently well in all the evaluated traits in all the years all the seasons or location instead of a line which performs well only in few traits so this is the crux of the method what we have proposed so the breeders aim is to come out and suggest the farmer a particular line which performs very well in all the traits and also stable for all the traits over locations or over year whatsoever may be the reason then in addition to this suppose if we allow the breeders to give the weightage in arbitrary then suddenly he will be in a position to know for whichever the line which he wants to release for whichever the trait <clears throat> more values are coming then he, if he is changing the weightage for that particular right automatically whatever the analysis he or she does finally that particular line will come as the top so for is the what is the way out data should dictate what is the weightage should be attached to each of the trait so this approach also we have captured and the efficiency of the approach was demonstrated by applying this method in okra and china aster real time data ihr the okra paper is already published in ihr journal recently so this particular paper only i presented during the international uh, statistical conference which was inaugurated, inaugurated by uh, bill gates in last november so what is the data requirement minimum 3 years 3 seasons either in a location or over location it is required so what is the objective of the breeder he has to select a best line among the several lines evaluated over all the traits whatever he has considered here one more uh, rider also i introduced that is a predefined objective of the data suppose if you allow the statistical package to do this analysis then it will assign the rank from top to bottom if it is for yield then it is not a problem suppose if it is for a disease resistant character then the evaluated line should be ranked reversely and also uh, uh, suppose if a breeder is trying to develop a compact variety if a flower crop variety then he will prefer a lesser diameter flower diameter so here again reverse ranking is required and moreover suppose if the character and considered is days to flowering so early to days to flowering whichever the line he has observed that he needs to give the first rank so this particular uh, idea it needs to be objective needs to be set only by the breeder who is involved in developing the variety so our aim is to listen to them and give the ranking whether highest to lowest or lowest to highest so if we are failing in this then automatically the best line may come out something else so let us uh, get into the example so in okra and china aster we have done this and i will present the results so first step is we need to identify what is what is the weightage for the traits using the non parametric measure so this is the weightage given for the particular trait so how the weightage have been worked out based on the non parametric measure so whichever the trait which are having the high stability that is least, least variability in a given year or across season season or across location that will automatically take the higher weightage accordingly weightage has been desired similarly for okra the weightage has been desired based on the data whatever it is generated by the breeder not arbitrarily now by now this is the regular approach if you see this is for a china aster given 
Suppose if we see for several characters, several lines happens to be the uh, best. Say somewhere uh, rank one happens to be for I H S C A J seventeen. Somewhere rank one is coming for some other right, some other lines. So in natural, we may not be in a position to take a holistic conclusion which is the best line across all the traits. So that we can recommend to the farmer. So in addition to the yield or quality crop protection traits. This is the best line which we will recommend combined over all the trials. So when we did this non-parametric methods, we can see that that IHR CA J17, which happens to be the best one across all the trials. Similarly, for okra genotypes, if you see this table, for each character, a particular line happens to be the top rank. So there is no consistency of ranking of lines. With respect to all the characters, so when we use our IH or non-parametric method, so the combination with the desirable weight, whatever I said earlier, the combination of all the traits has yielded that the OK MSH two, the CGMS line which was released as the best. So this approach it calls for releasing a particular variety not only based on a single trait, based on a combination of trait. With the suitable right age, and also taking into consideration what is the positive or negative traits, and also the stability over all the locations or all the years or all the seasons, whatever we does. Now let me come to the last topic, that is estimation of breeding value using best linear unbiased prediction method. This is very much useful in targeted hybridization. As a breeder. everyone will be interested to know what is the knowledge of breeding value of potential parent over the generation especially in <coughs> crop like mango where due to natural cross pollination it is very difficult to identify the pollen parent suppose a breeder is interested to develop a <coughs> identify fruits of intermediate size that is its preferred preferred range then he should be in a position to identify both the pollen and seed parent so that based on the observation generated in the progenies so this blup methodology what it does is it will estimate the <clears throat> breeding value for each of the parents so now given that estimated breeding value of each of the parent based on the progeny information a breeder <clears throat> can go for a targeted hybridization yes to get a preferred fruits of this range if i will make use of this particular parent as a pollen parent based on the information generated by blub i can get i can get inherited the same information in the next progenies so this methodology blub methodology is very famous in animal breeding but it is had to take up in agriculture crops breeding the blub methodology or estimation of breeding potential of every parent whatever the breeders are evaluating there is one classical paper in euphetica done in australian condition So now let me summarize some of the research areas or application of statistical techniques for horticulture crops. So here I have taken eight broad areas. Let me start with the crop improvement. Some of this I might have already attempted. Some of it I will tell. So this uh, evaluation of jump blossom lines. I said that cluster analysis is a very frequently used method. Then estimation of genetic method, uh, genetic parameters like <coughs> irritability, heterobiotic, heterosis. all this follows as a by product of some of the mating design and also if someone is interested to know what is the inheritance what is the gene action prevailing over the generation in my breeding trials so for this generation mean analysis is full too suppose if you want to study the group of experiments for self pollinated or vegetatively propagated crops the dust testing is precisely based on some statistical measure only even one can construct a selection indices based on the initial generation data i have dealt in detail about the stability and adaptability research let me come to the molecular breeding the molecular breeder they would have assess they would have accumulated in a microarray experiment huge jump plus huge gene uh, action data so gene processing data of uh, several conditions would have been provided or would have been generated by them now they need to group these genes into homogeneous groups so that it can be productively used so for this a multivariate tool as to like principal component analysis can be used 
obtain gene silencing studies. So the parameters which dictates siRNA is uh, naturally captured by a nonlinear model. So the parameters are not linearly related. So for this, one needs to go for artificial neural network model. Then most often we will be uh, drawing out what is the optimum number of markers or bands which are required. So for working out this optimum number of markers, a method like bootstrapping or jackknifing is very much helpful. So these are all some of the areas which are yet to be exploited wherein the high-end statistical techniques are used in molecular breeding. Let me come to the uh, natural resources, the soil science aspect. Say the entire resource sphere of the crop, if someone is trying to capture using the substrate dynamic studies. So the best usage is in nonlinear models. So that finally, one can say that yield of a particular crop is due to, not only due to these horticulture traits, uh, soil trait, microbial traits, many traits at one time, one can study using a substrate dynamic studies using a nonlinear model. Then comes the response surface model. The optimum values of NPK, whatever we are using for every crop, whatever we know in literature is arrived based on the response surface models only. Then already I have discussed in details about the canopy architecture models and also prediction of seed longevity in seed bank. Then coming to the uh, standardization of agro uh, varieties agro techniques, the crop logging models. <clears throat> so the crop logging precisely stage at each and every crop uh, phenological stages what are the crucial parameters which can in future dictate the yield? So for this, if you develop a simple regression model for each stage of the crop, based on the information collected, one can have a whole. Then similarly, uh, off-season cultivation. Using simulation model, suppose if you find out which are the factors which are responsible for higher yield in, inside a polyose construction, then you can simulate it for the outside situation. Here also the regression models are very much useful. Then I already discussed about the response surface model. Then coming to this uh, uh, crop protection study. So I already said about the disease forecasting models, how these uh, nonlinear models are being used. Even partial least square regression models are being also used for some of the studies. Coming to the post harvest management studies, here I would like to discuss for some two, three minutes because I have not touched this aspect. So when we conduct a post-harvest experimental study, normally we used to uh, test the treatment effects based on some CRD or RBD, CRD or factorial CRD analysis, but because these are all done in the lab experiment. But these uh, post-harvest data normally results in a qualitative data. So there is a contemporary of CRD and RBD or factorial RBD, just like Kriskal-Wallis test, the Friedman test, which we need to use for comparison of different treatments. And also distribution free methods for sensory evaluation, once I said when I was dealing with the correlation. Then another important area in post-service technology is osmotic dehydration study. So for this serpent surface model could be used to identify the best combination of factors which can determine the osmotic dehydrated product. Then coming to the Climate resilient uh, horticulture crops. Already I have discussed how these artificial neural network models could be useful to capture the inherent nonlinearity of climatic factors over one stage to another stage. Coming to the last one, that is the social science and extension economic research. Suppose someone is uh, interested to evaluate the release technology. For that, evaluating the release technology of several varieties or several methodologies. So they will be asking several farmers or several scientists to give the ranks. So again, since the ranks are given, one has to make use of a non-parametric method. Even computation of <coughs> growth rate of a particular commodity, it will follow a non-linear pattern because growth rate of any commodity in two given successive years won't be consistent. Then for price forecasting or market intelligence studies, it is better advisable to use that threshold autoregressive or vector autoregressive model. These are all a series of nonlinear time series model. Because again, the same reason is that price, whatever it is depicted in a particular week and subsequent weeks uh, are not consistent. Whatever the increase, whatever it is happening from first week to second week is not consistent from last week to last but one week. Then the last one, what I want to say is, identification of research gaps through bottom to top approach. That is one rank-based quotient approach. There is one very good paper I did with uh, 
our essential scientists though this precisely say based on several uh, parameters evaluated by the essential researchers as asked to the farmers which is the top priority which needs to give for a research in a university or in a research uh, organization let me conclude by saying about the different statistical packages what are the pros and cons there are different statistical packages which are available which are helpful to many people either it may be freely available or priced but what is the uh, precaution what we need to see if we critically see it will prompt us to use the default method for analysis already i said there are three different correlation method when we do a simple cluster analysis there are different methods for doing the cluster analysis you know very well that traits which we try to cap which we try to assess as a dendrogram in a cluster analysis say some 100 genotypes 100 varieties uh, evaluated over some 25 traits all these traits are not measured in the same scale so we cannot make use of a statistical package just by closing our eyes to generate a dendrogram so first we need to standardize the data because we need to bring all these traits on a common scale then only we can make use of a dendrogram so these are all hidden under the statistical package but it is not a default so what is the remedy one has to select a appropriate method based on the aim of the experiment either one can consult a statistician or we can see a statistical literature which advocate a suitable method for analysis of each situation suppose if our traits are following nominal scale ordinal scale what should be the methodology to be used so what is in nutshell i want to say ensure that non significant or unanticipated results are not due to wrong select wrong selection of data analysis method because your time as a researchers whether in field or lab is very very precious the choice of package is not important but the selection of appropriate method and interpretation of results are must let me conclude by saying data analysis is a scientific procedure it will help us to comprehend the data it can help the researchers to repeat the inference whatever drawn over time and space with more probability but selection of improper and inaccurate technique not only mislead the researchers but also fail to the ultimate goal for which the researcher started the research so what is the remedy a close association between the experimenter and statistician right from planning of the experiment i said the uniformity trial also what should be the optimum plot size what should be the optimum number of replication for each plot setting up of proper hypothesis what type of data to be collected and among the numerous analysis procedure what should be the proper analytical procedure to be used based on the aim of the experiment and also the interpretation of the data also matters the software packages will throw so many results but one need to interpret each and every result very precisely by keeping in mind the objective so i can conclude i conclude by saying statistical methods if employed carefully for research data analysis will certainly produce better efficient reproducible and practically feasible results thus maximizing the output of the researchers so i thank honorable vice chancellor and all the dignitaries from the university for giving me an opportunity to share my thoughts on this important topic so i request not only in this session for any queries uh, students or researchers whom so may be they can contact me either in my yahoo mail or in our in my icr mail i will be glad to help all of you whenever it is required thank you very much I thank you sir for sharing the screen thank you very much sir thank you sir you have covered all topics sir all analysis you no know, all statistical techniques yes sir thank you thank you sir dean sir so i can help even after this webinar also i have give, i have shared my mobile number and also my yahoo id icr email id students researchers they are most welcome to write 
even before starting the experiment also how we have to proceed or even during the course of experimentation also what should be the proper statistical method one should select i am most welcome anyone can request me or you can suggest me i will be in a position to happy everybody thank you sir thank you thank you sir uh, now question and please sir interesting session sir yes sir please ओके उमा कृष्ण गार श्रीनिवास वेणुगोपाल युवर स्टाक वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग इंफर्मेशन इन एक्सटेन we are adopting for the sampling that is the random sampling and the stratified sampling methods only we are following as a, as and nowadays yes, for sir. doing any extension activities yes sir is there any advanced sampling methods are there one thing or is there any software is available to to make our work very easy yes sir actually only the sampling aspect i did not touch in my seminar that is <laughs> is the only aspect i did not touch Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, the stratified, multi-stage stratified random sampling is the best method which is available as of now. Multi, please, pardon me, pardon. Multi, multi-stage stratified random sampling. Acha, multi-stage is the correct. Yeah, is the best method. Even it is used for estimation of articles of production area statistics in our country. So, if you peruse IASRI website for your mm-hmm. second question. Uh, easy way to identify a sampling method and also the sample size there is one online software also they are given in iasri website suppose if you key in some information it will come out with the proper sampling method to be used and what is the optimum samples to be considered kindly refer sir otherwise you kindly mail me i will be in a position to help you for that oh thank, thank you thank you thank, thank you. you sir So any other? Uh, yeah, my sir. It, please, sir, Doctor Vain Gopal. Yes, sir. Good morning. Uh, this is Doctor R V S Kerity, Director of Research, sir. Uh, good morning. Good morning, sir. So at the outset, I would like to thank you profusely for uh, sharing your views with regard to this particular uh, subject, statistics, thank which you, is sir. very much important uh, as far as uh, experimentation as well as drawing the conclusions from the data that an- analyzed data. Yes, sir. This is uh, first thing. Sir. Next thing is with regard to our uh, because as you know very well and we are dealing with the perennial crops, the IHR itself. And uh, as per our honourable vice chancellor's uh, instructions, we were asked to go for the uh, carbon sequestration in some of the perennial crops, especially during our uh, state level technical program discussions. So my interest is in that we are having the data. say we are operating the acrps for the past uh, 25 years or more the, especially a crop like uh, sapota where we have calculated the drisc norms and all this as per the procedures in world and carbon sequestration with regard to the crops like uh, sapota or uh, wild palm or coconut where the data is available for the past with regard to the morphological characters that is leaf area and uh, uh, branching pattern and everything whatever it may be so based on the data can we go for because they are in the statistical design only experiments were laid out now using this after a completion of the experimentation whatever that was given by the project coordinator this data can be utilized for uh, calculation of the car- carbon sequestration anything that has to be supplemented with regard to this are the straight away the data can be analyzed Yes sir. yes, sir. Let me respond. Actually, I have presented in my study also uh, the work we did with uh, soil scientist in IIT. Yes. There is a uh, grafted Alfonso mango trees. So, if you go through the paper, <coughs> he has uh, dealt in detail about the what type of uh, data needs to be given, and yes, uh, our intervention in non-linear methodology. Certainly, I will be in a position uh, to collaborate. Uh, of course with uh, proper permission from our office and i will after this webinar is over 
I will share that paper and also in current science also another paper is published. I will share with uh, Dr. Uma Krishna. Uh, kindly go through the paper, sir. If there is any additional information to be corrected, because you are the best judge, because we will be at the receiving end, suddenly I will be in a position to uh, coordinate in this. Thank and you very much, sir, because uh, that is most required and uh, our Vice Chancellor is also very much interested because this is the need of our actually. Yes, sir, true. Carbon yes. sequestration in all the things. We are having many, at many research stations, many experiments were laid out with uh, sufficient duration already completed. Most of the trials they have completed, say, varietal trials or uh, fertilizer trials or whatever it may be. But the plantations are there. Before going for removal of or clearing the area with regard to our requirement, future requirement, can we go for the analysis? That is what uh, my intention is. So that we will be coming out the, with the tangible results. So those very much, sir. For, those sir? Papers I will share with you, sir. Because right, sir. Uh, he has expressed much more detail than what my... A meager knowledge in this subject. subject. Thank, Thank you, sir. So we will, we will get back. Yes, sir. I will be asking the uh, respective scientists uh, to come in contact with you so that uh, whatever the data that is available, they can share with you. If at all anything is needed other than that, so we will go for it. Okay, sir. Sure. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank for you. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Emmanuel Garu. Emmanuel, sir. Uh, please. Good afternoon, sir. So, yeah. uh, Good afternoon, sir. Please. I have a question like, you know, for data management. Uh, 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 your, voice is, your voice is not clear. There is some break in one. Oh, sir. Please. So I have a question like for long term insect population studies. I want to study long term insect population studies under climate change conditions. So, some disturbance from your side, sir. So in terms of uh, studying the big data management, you know, yeah, yeah. in terms of studying big data management for studying the insect population dynamics, yeah, uh, under the climate change condition, suppose yeah. you're studying, so how do you help us sir, in this matter? Yes, sir. I have projected one slide, which is very yeah. much so the big data analysis, this uh, simple diversity analysis sir, yeah. is the best method. Even we can go for principal component analysis also to group the insects based around the whatever the characteristics we have uh, recorded. It is very much helpful. This big data analysis is very much helpful in this. So that most important thing is, because some, suppose some new pest is coming. So initial yeah. stage itself, uh, where it is grouped, based on some few parameters, if you are able to identify, then whatever the management strategy is being used yes. in that group, one can make use. This is very much helpful in biomedical research, whatever the biomedical research. Certainly, we will, uh, with uh, proper uh, approval from both the sites, certainly we will collaborate, sir. I will be happy. So, can we approach you in further, sir, for this analysis? Certainly, certainly, sir. Thank you, sir. Sir, Garu. So please, Dr. Charpatrayar. Sir, uh, sir, sir, is it always necessary to mention p-value? Yeah, p-value. Yeah, yeah, it is uh, better. I have given one classical example because if the p-value is less than 0 0.05, that is sufficient for taking an inference. But p-values are uh, very, very less. Then the strength of the inference, whatever we have drawn, is much more probability is much more. So why to hide some one important information, whatever we have got in our research? That's why if you see foreign journals, certainly they will uh, insist us to give the p-value also in addition to the cd value or whatever may be. It is always uh, advisable, sir, better to give the p-value in addition to other values. It is for our health only. Sir, sir, in the data analysis, what we are doing in online, we are not getting this p-value, sir, always. Uh, that's what sir, it differs from uh, package to package. Okay, it's very okay. from package to package. Right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Sir, uh, sir. When go for, uh, good morning. Good I'm Dr. Sujata, professor in entomology and DAC of Dr. Horticulture 
YSR Articulture University. Please, please. So I need a little bit information regarding the same thing which my colleagues requested regarding population dynamics in case of perennial crops like guava, maybe mango, or maybe different uh, other orchard crops. In that, generally, population correlation with weather parameters will be taken number of adults. Yes, yes, ma'am. Maybe hoppers, maybe white flies, maybe thrips, other uh, mites, other things, foliage pests. In case of cryptic insects, maybe borers. So generally, we will go with uh, damage percentage by taking four directions, branches, and uh, different three levels like that in case of sucking pests. In case of borers, the population dynamics. Actually, damaging stage is larva. Yes, madam. So Please. how to take a population count? Adults, we may not be find in the field while taking weather data. So can on what stage basis we can go for the population count, weekly counts? or maybe fortnightly counts? Uh, actually, uh, Madam, our uh, ex-DDG Dr. Krishna Kumar sir always uh, used to say this because I had a good uh, research papers with him. So what he was telling is when it is uh, totally clearly not known, it is better to start with uh, once in three days or weekly or fortnightly, then we will establish through a particular statistical model which is the optimum interrelation which captures. So first time means we needs to work out several uh, time period. So that interaction needs to be worked out, madam. Because my knowledge uh, with respect to this is, uh, it goes towards the discussion, whatever I had with uh, sir. Okay. That is interval is, that, uh, that may be other factor depending on the uh, period of life stage. Exactly. The larval period may be 20 days or weekdays. That depends on the life period of the insect. That is different. My concern is we, we have to go for destructive sampling for counting the population of that larval stage and weather parameters. Okay. Or pupil stage may be in some other place. Total population count we, need, we may not be getting. Okay. And but, even that damaged figure also, that is an, uh, whether live larva is there inside or already it has damaged and gone out. So these type of practical difficulties are there. Yes, uh, uh, madam, uh, I have presented one uh, leaf area estimation non-destructive method using some simple linear regression model. Can we okay. make use of this? Is it possible so that non-destructively, <clears throat> of course, first year, it has to be brought to the lab, the whatever the data you are having, maybe 100 samples, 150 samples. So if we try to develop a non-destructive model, then it will be, because we have not attempted this, it's very new to me, okay. and, but uh, your suggestion is uh, excellent, uh, but I need uh, some sort of collaboration or someone, so that if that same methodology if could be useful, then it will be uh, excellent, I feel, a non-destructive method. Kindly, okay. we need to we yes, need to develop some model for yes, this yes, type madam. of thing. Yes, madam. Thank you for your interesting. Okay, question. okay. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you, madam. Thank you, madam. Sir, sir one more. Hello, Sivatswar. Dr. Hello, Sivatswar. Yes, yes, sir. Uh, sir, very good morning. Good first morning, of all, sir. I would like first of all, I would like to say for very nice and informative presentation. Uh, you, so for the fraternity from the fraternity is a uh, of agriculture statistics we people are just treated as like you know kadi patta but apart that uh, that uh, <laughs> takes uh, i have some query regarding this stability model Please. i think uh, you you heard about this uh, ami and gg by plot so yeah, sir yeah. can you throw some light on that what is the difference between uh, ami and gg by plot so ami by product is a gg by plot Okay, when okay. we do that analysis uh, using <coughs> AMI model, instead of this okay. uh, regular stability models, the byproduct of this AMI model is the GG pi plot. So the GG pi plot, what we will be doing is, 
we will group the genotypes into different homogeneous groups based on the biplot analysis so that is okay. a difference between ami and gge biplot but the difference between the normal stability and the ami model is the ami model as the name states the name states that is for multiplicative interaction effect if it prevails then we will prefer that the uh, ami model than the regular stability model especially the non linear interaction wherever it prevails people are adopting for that ami model but there is no uh, 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 there is no prejudices in using that but finally how it is useful for the breeders that is the most important whether we use this model or that model what is the utility that matters sir i hope i am clear okay so one again one more thing is there that is associated with gg by plot in fact uh, if someone so, suppose i have to uh, suggest which model i have to prefer to plant breeder whether you go for me or gg by plot and which one is superior so actually gg by plot is a by product of ami model I I do agree. I do so, agree. I know that. Uh, okay. Yeah. I know that ki for particular environment, which genotype is better, you have to prefer that as GG by plot. And until otherwise, you will go for ME. But suppose I have to in, cumulatively, I have to recommend someone ki which model is better. So either GG by plot or ME. So which I have to prefer? No, no. These are not two different models actually. Whatever the analysis uh, results we get through ME model. For presentation okay. in a graphical procedure, we are going for GG by plot. Even the GG by plot, we are using for diversity analysis also. So GG by okay. plot main aim is grouping, grouping of the genotypes, consistently of... grouping the genotype pattern into homogeneous group, just like a dendrogram does. But okay. the length of the GG by plot, the distance from the center, will say what is the importance. You may be knowing the factor analysis. So in factor analysis, yeah, yeah, yeah. so it does the same thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, I got your point. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Sir, good myself, uh, Dr. Ravindra Kumar from uh, Horticulture Station, Kovuru, sir. Yes, sir. Good morning. Sir, good morning, sir. Sir, very nice presentation, sir. Thank and you. Uh, we are here at Kovuru. We are conducting uh, some tissue culture experiments, sir. Okay. Uh, I. I come across some research papers uh, stating that uh, before conducting the experiments, they are predicting the treatments and other things for better uh, experimentation. That prediction models uh, some people are using in tissue culture experiments. Uh, can you throw some light on these prediction models for uh, deciding the treatments, sir? No, no. Actually, I have also not heard, sir, the prediction uh, of uh, treatments. Prediction yes, sir. Yes, sir. Kindly share the paper. I will go okay, and sir. will get back to you. Certainly, sir. Sir, speakers. Ah, uh, sir. Sir, when go, Palan, sir. Yes, sir. Ah, uh, sir. I am very happy, sir. You gave a very good uh, lecture, you, and sir. really, you have thrown a lot of information about the statistical models, and uh, really, we have not had even some abbreviations of that stats also. Some of the things very useful to our scientists and teachers. Thank so you. the best way is, sir, we have to we have to uh, take online classes at least for our teachers and staff members, for research staff for three or four days. Yes, sir. So that may be a very good with uh, if you explain with examples. Sir. Yes. So this one hour, two hour may not be much useful to the. Uh, I feel so, sir. If no, kindly no. Uh, we will approach the director. Yes, sir. Uh, ASR, our vice chancellor is there. He will take permission if you could conduct a. Three-day training or four-day training or five-day training to the our staff through online. It will be a, right. a better useful to the entire university, sir. Our sir, our right. staff will benefit from IRA, your experiences. Sir, IRA, sir. IRA are students. Sir. Actually, I am offering online students even for staff also, sir. Because yeah, sure. now staff doing okay. research. They every research that without uh, uh, statistical analysis, it, the data will not be useful, sir. So. Agreed. That way, our teachers also will get benefits, sir, and um, that will be more useful to our teachers, sir. Sure, sir. If you conduct an online testing, our vice chancellor will. Uh, I request our honorable chancellor to discuss with the because we have MOE also yeah, with yeah, the director sure. of IHR and make arrange some. So this way, at least our university staff and students will get benefit by your uh, um, great research experience, sir. Agreed, sir. Sir, sir. Also, now I will propose the word of thanks by R.V. Sujata, sir. So there may be so many questions, but they cannot get answered. You may give answer, but so let us postpone it and 
సో నో ఐ రిక్వెస్ట్ ది డాక్టర్ సుజాత గారు ఆర్వి సుజాత గారు వన్ క్వశ్చన్ సర్ వన్ క్వశ్చన్ సర్ ఇఫ్ యు డోంట్ మైండ్ యా ప్లీజ్ ఇస్ ది డాక్టర్ పద్మావతి సర్ యా యు కెన్ టేక్ ది నంబర్ ఫోన్ వేర్ గోపాల్ సర్ నంబర్ ఆల్ కెన్ ఆస్క్ బికాస్ देयर ఆర్ సో మెనీ డౌట్స్ స్టాట్స్ ఇస్ వి ఆర్ కూర్ హ్ ఐ డోంట్ థింక్ ఇట్ విల్ టేక్ మోర్ దెన్ 1 మినిట్ సర్ జస్ట్ ఐ హావ్ ఏ డౌట్ సర్ in vegetables hmm. we used to evaluate several germplasm lines sir 400 to 500 germplasm lines uh, yeah, we used to plant them in 10 or 20 or 30 with two standard checks or one standard check and your augmented block design we used to practice is there any better uh, uh, design for this or this is, this is a precise one for this particular uh, yeah. uh, germplasm evaluation sir augmented block design is very very good design even there are advanced designers lattice design uden square design one can go but augmented bavd is that very standard one okay sir thank you, you. correct path only madam oh, thank you sir already already told already told for 500 uh, there is the method to be used yes, okay sir now i wish sujatha garu please go ahead with vote of thanks thank you sir uh, respected dignitaries uh. and participants of today's webinar a very good afternoon to one and all on behalf of uh, associate dean ma'am and entire fraternity of the college i take this opportunity to propose our sincere vote of thanks to all present in this webinar can i can i interrupt for one minute sir can i just uh, say few words i was i was thinking uh, i could not see you ah no just uh, I, i just wanted to yes sir thank you really uh, it's a fantastic presentation outstanding presentation thank you I thank think, you uh, dr venu gopalan of course i know him his uh, kind of you know uh, passion for the subject and uh, his uh, dedication and he has i think covered everything every area and it's uh, just like you know uh, peeling the banana and giving to us and uh, that to excellent know, sir uh, start excellent lecture sir excellent lecture i never heard instructs like this sir yeah even uh, i am very you know afraid of mathematics and that to today with his lecture i think teachers if you would have had like this uh, definitely we don't know uh, we would have taken yes, sir. that yes sir and uh, definitely is uh, you know yes, sir. Uh, covered every area and uh, with the examples very that clarity is there so many so i think uh, definitely our uh, students uh, hope they will be benefited and uh, many uh, you know i think uh, people are also requesting that uh, we will have uh, dr venugopalan in touch and uh, even i don't mind having uh, some series on different uh, research aspects uh, with you in a uh, future Okay. and also we are thinking uh, of having a mentorship program at our university uh, so i think uh, we will be having uh, you as one of our uh, mentor for sure. our students and also for our uh, researchers and sure. uh, uh, one thing uh, dr venugopal yes, is uh, mini minimum plot size uh, yes. dr kams and you did uh, a very good work even uh, that uh, publication i think i had one hard copy also yes sir it you was have the soft copy yeah, uh, yeah. you can share uh, sure. uh, i think we can circulate to all our uh, staff and uh, students that will be useful and uh, you also really given very good examples how to you know carry out uh, the non destructive uh, experiments involving the non destructive methods and uh, you also covered the climate change which is you know mostly talked about uh, subject today uh, particularly in horticulture and uh, the disease pest forecasting that also actually uh, some of the areas we already discussed and uh, even the precision farming uh, what you mentioned uh, analyzing this big data is also actually thanks to our uh, dr rvs kritkar uh, our uh, dr uh, recently only we discussed Uh, to have carbon sequestration and uh, <laughs> 
disturbance in your side you most probably now oh, i am am i audible ah, yes sir no audible uh, in continuation to that i know um, uh, the ihr has published uh, about the carbon secretion of mango yeah so taking uh, into consideration of our own strength in our state and uh, uh, you know our station sambaji pet uh, tirupati kovur these are the uh, very established uh, you know research institutes working on coconut cocoa citrus so uh, i can write to your director and of course we have mou also yeah. and uh, uh, under that umbrella i'll be writing a letter for your cooperation in analyzing this data and uh, i also request our uh, you know dr garu for arranging this data and uh, i request our scientists also so that you will also be given uh, you know proper uh, uh, recognition okay sir whether it is the way of uh, publication or uh, in uh, carrying out future research also and uh, i really once again uh, thank you very much uh, from uh, my personal behalf and also all the staff and uh, the university at the ysr hospital university so when we are talking about uh, our university uh, recognition not only national international level i think one of the most important thing is the uh, kind of quality of publications and unless we have you know proper uh, planning through experimental designing we cannot publish any good quality paper at least in international journals so that kind of uh, you know importance we have to give at analysis so hopefully uh, this your lecture today definitely uh, bring change in our uh, mindset uh, of having a very good uh, analytical uh, designs for it means and i have seen uh, in the you know, many of our scientists uh very so i have seen here and uh, hopefully uh, all of us will be touched with you especially and uh, thank you very much dr venugopalan uh, thank you sir for giving me an opportunity also thank you sir thank you so much A very good afternoon to one and all. On behalf of the associate dean and entire fraternity of the college, I take this opportunity to propose our sincere vote of thanks to all present in this webinar. While thanking the Almighty for His countless blessings, I extend a hearty vote of thanks to all those who have directly and indirectly contributed to this webinar. With deep sense of gratitude, I feel privileged to extend our heartfelt thanks to Dr. T. Janakiram Garu. honorable vice chancellor of dr ysr h sir your gracious presence added charm to the gathering and we all are inspired by your visionary thoughts and valuable words your thoughts have enlightened our minds and have shown us a new path you are such a great visionary who commits himself in a great way for the growth of the university i am sure that all the participants are overwhelmed to see you and really inspired by your highly sparkling words under your dynamic leadership we are sure that our university will reach greater heights at national and international level thank you once again sir i really feel privileged to express my deep sense of gratitude to our eminent speaker dr r venugopalan garu principal scientist division of social sciences and training indian institute of horticultural research bangalore it was indeed a privilege to have dr r venugopalan garu an eminent and renowned statistician as guest speaker for this webinar his insightful lecture on application of statistical concepts in horticultural research basics and way ahead was full of wisdom and knowledge sir you have given a different perspective of statistics and we are fortunate enough to listen to your lecture you have given a statistics treat to our brains today sir not only students even the faculty are also benefited by your enlightening talk 
once again i thank you sir for sparing your precious time for all of us i wish to express our gratitude to the president of today's function dr m lakshmi narayan reddy garu dean of horticulture and dean of phys studies for being with us always guiding us and supporting us your gesture of appreciation gladdened our heart and we convey our sincere thanks to you sir and i acknowledge my sincere thanks and gratitude to our beloved university officers dr a sujatha garu dean of student affairs dr a s padmavathamma garu controller of examinations dr k gopal garu registrar dr r v s k reddy garu director of research dr b srinivas garu director of extension dr j dilip babu garu director of industrial and international programs and dr d v swami garu university librarian for sparing your valuable time with us and just as sail help the boat to go in the right direction so is the guidance of our beloved associate dean and chairman of this webinar dr k umar jyoti garu thank you ma'am for being a catalyst that stimulated us to do our best and also for standing as pillar of strength to us i also extend thanks to all the staff members both teaching and non teaching for their enormous cooperation in the organization of this webinar i would also like to thank the people who work behind the scene to make this event happen last but not the least i want to say that the essence of a fruit is always tasted last so he, so as uh, our participants a total of 447 participants have registered for the webinar from different universities and different fields thank you dear participants for your enthusiasm in attending this webinar and i am sure that you are enriched by the lecture delivered today so a reminder is we have provided feedback link to all of you in the chat box kindly fill that feedback form and you will get certificates soon Finally, with folded hands, much respect and reverence, I thank every one of this webinar. Thank you, Pananda. Thank you, Madam. Thank you. Th thank you, Dr. M. L. Nandigaru, Dr. Uma Krishna, Uma Jyoti Garu, Dr. Sujatha. Thank you, sir. 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 Thank you very much, sir. Very good, Pangar. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Sir, we will touch with you, sir. Uh, sure, sir. Sir, please uh, uh, send the copy of your uh, today's uh, lecture, sir. Okay, sure. We will share to all the participants. Okay. okay, sir. Thank you.